Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content, and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today we have another playthrough and review. Today I'm going to be playing through and reviewing this game here, Cutthroat Cove, Pieces of Eight, a Pirates card game. Full disclaimer, this is a paid playthrough and review, and Cutthroat Cove is obviously a pirate-themed game, uh, but it's a press-your-luck, push-your-luck style card game where players are going to be partaking in a little bit of a game of hot potato, so to speak, through the form of card play. And this is what the game looks like set up. So first of all, you have two decks of cards. You have these yellow back cards, which are your chest cards, and you have your blue back cards which are your event cards at the beginning of the game the players will shuffle the cards and they will deal out one chess card to all the players in the game for the purposes of this video I'll be simulating a two-player game although this game can play from two to four players also the players will shuffle the event deck here and they will also deal out one event card to each player at the table. Now, very important, if we were playing three or four players, we would be adding these cursed cards to the chess deck according to the player count. At a three-player count, there would be one cursed card there. And at a four-player count, there would be two cursed cards there. And the cursed cards, basically, if at the end of the game you have the cursed card in your possession... Uh, you will have no chance of winning the game. It's impossible for you to win the game. So that's where the whole hot potato element that I mentioned earlier comes into play. At a two-player game, there are no curse cards in the deck. Instead, players are simply trying to be the player at the end of the game to have the closest to eight pieces of treasure in their possession. If you go over the eight mark, then you will not uh, be in contention for victory either. So again, the player who's closest to eight will be the winner. So we're going to simulate a few rounds here. We're going to start with this player here. And at the beginning of a player's turn, the first thing they do is they draw the top card from the event deck. And now they look among their two event cards. There's, they're always going to have two cards to choose from. And they pick which one they want to play. So we've got this frigate card here, which says choose another player's chest and swap it with one of yours. We also have this Sirens card here, which says you may choose to reverse the turn order, and then everyone then passes one chest in the chosen direction. This could be a little bit more valuable uh, in a multiplayer game. So I'm looking at this chest right here, and this has five treasure in it. So while uh, at surface level this looks really good, remember, if you pass eight, at the end of the game, you're actually not going to be in contention for victory. So... Uh, I probably do not want this card in my hand. So I am going to play the uh, frigate card here, which says choose another player's chest and swap it with one of yours. So we could always, uh, as the game progresses, you'll have more cards possibly to choose from. In this case, we're just going to swap one card there. And I swapped a 5-4-4, four, four, basically. And we will discard this card here. And now we will move on to this player right here. And this player, again, we start by drawing the top card from the event deck. And they also got a frigate card. Choose another player's chest and swap it with your own. And they've got this Sirens card as well. They're not going to switch the turn order right now. They're going to play this frigate here. And they're going to swap cards right back with this player over here. So now it's this player's turn again, and we begin the turn by drawing the top card of the event deck. And this is an interesting one. We've got this merchant card. Give another player one of your chests. So I will play this event, and I'm going to give these four to this player here so that they're already at nine uh, treasure. Because I know that they had the uh, four treasure, and now they're also going to have the five. Okay, now this player will go again. They'll draw the top card of the... Uh, event deck and now they've got to choose between the sirens here and the sloop and the sloop says take a chest from the center or from a player with more chests than you so they're going to take a chest from the center just to have more chests to work with and again this is a very valuable one here with four treasure there now, very important, whenever a player has no chess cards, they will draw the top card of the chess deck and add it to their player area. So they always have at least one to work with. Now it's this player right here, and they're going to draw the top card from the event deck. And we have some choices here, and we've got this storm card. Choose one player and force them to return two chests back to the center. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to play this. 
Uh, we reverse Siren's card. We reverse the turn order. And everyone then passes one chest in the chosen direction. So we're going to pass this treasure of one. And they're going to pass one to us. And they're going to try to get rid of this five for now. Because it's a big, big card. And this player is done with their turn. And now back at this player, they will draw this top card of the event deck. And they've got to choose between Siren's and Compass. Compass says, look at any chest. Then draw one chest from the center. So first of all, it gives you information. You get to look at another player on the table and their chest and see what cards they might have. We know that this guy has a five. And then they could draw one chest from the center and they will. And they've got this chest Oh, barnacles. That's a lot of junk in the trunk. This is basically a dud. The players, uh, your opponents, don't necessarily know that you have this, but that it has no value whatsoever uh, towards the end game. And we would just discard that card right there. And this is pretty much what the game plays like, the game of Cutthroat Co. Pieces of Eight. Players keep on going through these uh, motions, through these actions, until they run through the entire event deck. Once they run through the event deck, Players will factor things in, such as, does anybody have cursed treasure cards in a multiplayer game in three or four players? Because those players wouldn't even count to victory regardless of their treasure. After we factor those things in, the players will count the amount of pieces that they have on their chess cards. And the player closest to eight will be the winner. If a player surpasses the total of eight, that player also will not count towards the uh, consideration for victory. If for whatever reason players are tied with the most pieces, then you would break the tie first with the person who has the least number of chess cards, then the player who has the highest value chess, and finally if there's still a tie, each player that's tied will draw the top card from the deck over here, from the uh, chess deck, and the player who drew the highest value card would win. And that's pretty much it as far as Cutthroat Cove. Let's get back and hear my final thoughts about the game. So what are my final thoughts about Cutthroat Cove? So first of all, this reminds me of another pirate theme press your luck game that I play called Dead Man's Draw. Uh, but I would say that this game is significantly lighter and that comes with a lot of advantages. First of all, the game is not, it's a card game. It doesn't feel thematic in the sense that you feel like you're in a pirate's world. However, you feel like you're playing a pirate's game. This feels like a game that pirates would actually play with one another, uh, sitting on the deck, uh, <laughs> you know, waiting for the sun to set or for the ship to sail or what have you. So you kind of get that feel because it's a very cutthroat game as the game or the title of the name mentions. Uh, basically, every action you're doing is to try to get ad take advantage of the situation, improve your circumstances, and hurt the other players around the table. Uh, I do think that the game is a little bit more interesting with more players because you do have those cursed cards, uh, according to the player count, and that adds an additional element, an additional wrinkle to the game where you're trying to play a little game of hot potato because you do not want to end the game with that card in your possession because if you do, then you won't even factor into the final scoring and uh, you just basically wasted your time. So... This game here, as I was referring to earlier, is a lighter type press your luck game because there really isn't much to it from a rules perspective. You could read the rule book, which is just a small little pamphlet, and finish that in about a minute or so, and then get straight into the game and there's basically no rules reminders. You simply draw a event card and choose among two event cards to play one. And the cards basically tell you what to do. There is a little bit of strategy and planning and tactics reacting to the situation actually more than strategy is tactics because you can choose to make decisions or play the event cards based on what you think is the most optimal decision to make under the present circumstances. But at the same time, it's just a child could play this, a non-gamer could play this, a person who's not interested in games whatsoever can play this and have a pretty good time. It plays really quickly according to the back here. It's about 10 minutes, perhaps even quicker at a two-player count. So you can repeat and play this game uh, a couple times in a row. So if you like press your luck games, if you like games that involve the idea of um, helping yourself at the expense of somebody else, cutthroat games, light quick card games, and you like the idea of a pirate theme game where again, as I mentioned earlier, it feels like you are playing a game that a pirate would play, then Cutthroat Cove is a game you'd like to consider. Check in the description down below for more information on this game. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us here at Have Board Games. This is Harry saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.